Well, I was only going to do two Novus tracks, but from every direction I was inundated with. Do la vie rose, do la vie rose. So I am only a gentleman and I have to oblige. My name is Nelson Everhart. I normally say welcome back to Spiral, but I feel like I haven't left since I just posted the Conidus, Conidus combat track. Hey guys, sorry for interrupting. This is Editing Nelson here to explain that I recorded this video just after Novus released in December of 2022. It's now April of 2023. Bad YouTuber. Sorry, Recording Nelson. Go ahead. So let me take you back to the early 90s when I was still in high school. I still had time to listen to a bunch of music. My favorite bands were techno bands like Depeche Mode and New Order and Pet Shop Boys and, and other bands like that. At the time, for some reason, what was really popular was to release remix albums. So I'd have a favorite track from Violator from Depeche Mode, say, Walking in My Shoes, just as an example, going through the HMV, I was living in Toronto at the time. HMV was a big music store. Uh, music stores are where you would go in the mall to buy these silver discs that had music files on them. And I would come across a Walking In My Shoes remix album. And I could hear my favorite tune, but done in kind of a, a different style. So it was a way to see a different perspective on a track that you already knew you liked. It wasn't always just you know, an extended intro or a breakdown in the middle. A lot of times they remix the song to the point where you, you barely recognize it as the original song. And some of those, you know, might wind up being your favorite remixes. So flash forward several decades and Novus comes along. And for this piece, King's Isle wanted to remix the Polaris house combat track that I wrote back in the day. Editing Nelson, put the date of the Polaris house combat track up on the screen, please. Thank you. Here, so I chopped up the original song into, you know, maybe a bar, maybe a couple beats, and assigned those chops up to a battery kit. And then I simply played the keys on the keyboard to trigger those samples. It took me a while, it was a lot of experimentation to get into, found some phrases that I thought worked and then decorated them with some other instruments. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me play the track for you, then we'll come back and talk about it. You know that I rushed to record this video because I didn't even put a new ending on there. I wound up using so many chops that I actually ran out of keys on one instance of battery. So I uh, have another instrument here of the chops. And you're gonna see a lot of similarities to the other remixes I did in terms of the instrumentation. I got a drum kit down here that's way more of a contemporary drum kit than I would have ever expected to play in Wizard 101.
Uh, and then I've got the 808 sub bass that I'm using to double a lot of those kick patterns. And I have a lot of these arpeggiator patterns. And once again, that is coming from the Arturia synth bundle. This is a, an emulator of a Roland Juno 6. And the patch is called Growler Peggio. Doubling that up with another synth. The nice thing about the arpeggiator on a lot of these old synths is that they were unpredictable and you wouldn't really know when it was gonna hit certain notes or not. You're just holding down a chord. Uh, for example, here's a nice C major chord. And notice that there's a filter that's kind of muting it out there, rolling off the high ends and then that frequency's going up and down. So you never really know what what the final performance is gonna sound like. And that's cool when you start doing this because you're gonna get some unpredictable results, which is gonna make things sound ways that you didn't necessarily intend them. And that can be kind of exciting creatively. Cross my fingers and hope it sounded right. But for the most part, it's just throwing a little bit of unpredictability in there. So right off the top, we're starting with a pretty obvious fanfare from the House Combat track. And for the most part, the chops that I did, I mapped them so that they're all together. The pieces that play in the track next to each other are right next to each other on adjacent keys. But playing them in that order is not necessarily how I wanted to play it back. Again, this is taking place in Design's mind and he's misremembering or kind of riffing a little bit ad-libbing a little bit with the with the pieces of the track so i wanted to jumble it up a little bit more so we're using parts from very different pieces of the track that's sometimes hard when you modulate as much as i try to during a two minute track because certain parts are in different keys but again that could wind up being a good thing the other thing that i established early is that we wanted the samples to sound like samples a little bit like they would have in the 90s. It would be kind of a filtered sound. So I've got all the battery instances. I have this doing a little bandpass filter. This blue section uh, are the only frequencies that are passing through that filter. And also send it through a little bit of delay just so it would sound a little bit different than the new material that I was composing. So the chops sound good. but they definitely have that a little bit far away sound, right? We're going for that kind of gritty uh, Akai S1000 sample sound, a, l a little bit crushed, I guess. And it wound up being a little bit thin and I wanted to kind of beef it up with some new material. Design's not just taking the old pieces, he's creating new stuff on the foundation of the original universe. <laughs> so that 808, uh, sub bass in there was key to get it a little more punchy and while I had battery out I also loaded up another instance I have I had two for the chops and this is the third one and it's using one of the presets called exile kit I'm used to composing in kind of a full orchestral style, right? There's a lot of layers. There's a lot of players on each one of those layers. This being a more electronic style, there's just different aesthetics that it's way easier to compose a track like this with just three tracks going into it. And having said that, I also still am me. So I had to go overboard on other areas, I guess. So it's kind of fun that everybody knows what comes next in that track, having heard it 400 times, but I can take it somewhere else. So I'm able to do a little bit of uh, what the remixers did that excited me, you know, in high school about taking a track and then kind of re-examining it, tearing it apart, playing with expectations a little bit. It's still Wizard 101. I don't want it to sound like a complete departure from the music. So I'm using spiccato strings that I use uh, all over the place. And the vocals.
This down here, the Evolve Loop, this is an older library from Heaviosity. I think this was the first library that I became aware of them. And it had a lot of synth-based patches, a lot of pads and uh, drum loops that I really liked. That still sound fresh as beds for other things going on right now. This technique here is something that I learned when I was doing Vex, which I actually have a playlist for on YouTube. He soundtrack I wrote like 18 or 19 years ago now, I think, where I like to stack these loops. So all the loops are assigned to various keys. So this is contact. This is the host for most of my library of samples. This is the score fair menu. And you'll see I'm, I'm playing the C down here. And then I play the D right there. And if I play them both at the same time, it gives you a, a different vibe. So again, looking for inspiration in a little bit of the unpredictable, you know, just trying something and see what happens. So I never turned my nose up at that technique. And here I'm decorating the Evolve loop with the drum kit. These are the hi-hats are coming out of the drum kit just to give it a bit of a pulse there. When I was writing this, I had to start with the chops because that kind of determined the key and the, the chords that I was using. I was just playing with the material that was already there. I specifically remember writing that bass line and going, am I really gonna, I'm really trying to do something this groovy <laughs> Wizard 101 track? I thought about it for a little while and I gave myself permission. I said, yeah, you know what? Let's have some fun with it. Program this part in. And you'll see down here on the drum kit, just keeping it pretty straight, right? But the loops in the background. are decorating that drum line differently. Here in this part, notice we're between the chop sections, which means that I was probably trying to link whatever key we got to here. I needed to find a way of getting it back to over here because again, the chops are the limiting factor. Accordion, I forgot I put some accordion in there. I had more that I wanted to do with it in this track, but this wound up being the only part that it that it worked on. There was a, a song that was kind of like a uh, like a war protest song called 19. Very famous part where they're just like, they play this long kind of political statement and it says, and the average age of the soldier was none and 19. And that kind of re-trigger of it was basically them sort of owning the technique. Like before it was like, hey, look, I'm pretending like I have Sly and the Family Stone or David Bowie playing behind me. It was really fun finding these parts uh, in the chops and then deciding how to decorate them with other instruments. Like here, using the sub bass to help those little eighth notes punch out. Something I do really like about battery is that it's basically a different drum kit on every octave. So you have kick, snare, and usually some kind of uh, hi-hat sound. And then if you go to the next C, the next octave up, you got other kicks, other snares, and then, you know, 
other hi-hat sounds. So you really can pick from a lot of different drum kits just with one battery patch. This is the DJ trying to get the dance floor on a frenzy. So I wanted to get a little crazier. So he's looking for crazier sounds. I, I started playing that part and only had a few tracks soloed. I was like, why? Ah, okay, that makes more sense. But if you listen to this part. I'm trying to get back to the loop point, back to the beginning key and everything. I had found a way to do it here, but you can see that I'm actually playing them in order, but I'm not playing them. I'm not playing them at their original length. Counting is really weird. It's really like one, two, one, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, one, two, one, 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 one. I mean, it sounds like a computer playing back a digital audio file wrong, right? It's re-triggering. It's, it's kind of getting that stuff out of order. It's playing stuff that it hadn't cleared out of its memory from before. This was all considerations in Novus and trying to get into the mind, uh, pun intended, I guess, of design and, and what that process would, would result in, how, what it would sound like when it uh, exited his imagination. <laughs> So first the strings in that synth uh, line are doubled and then the strings only go up a minor third to add a little harmony there just to increase the tension a bit before coming back to the original chops. There you go guys, by request, La Vie Rose. Uh, je pense que c'est the, the pink town, right? Pink town? I think this is gonna wrap up Novus, so uh, let's continue on the next video with one of the final two worlds. I wonder which one it'll be. Tours wrapping up. If you got a favorite track from Mirage or Wizard City, let me know in the comments. Bon, merci, au revoir.